I'm Jim Kunkel, and welcome to Master Coding Inspector Insights. Joining me today is Juan Caballero, who is a Master Coding Inspector, and he's also on the Board of Governors of SSPC, the Society for Protective Coatings. Juan, welcome. Hello, Jim. Um, nice to, to meet you, and I'm very happy to be here in this new series on your YouTube channel. Um, call it MCI Insights. So I'm looking forward to it and collaborate with you and the industry and give part of our knowledge and experiences back to, to the industry and contribute. No problem, Juan. And, and the nice thing about this is it's our premiere episode. And for the viewers, we're going to focus on the first couple episodes related to concrete. But most of the stuff that Juan and I will be discussing uh, can really relate to any type of substrates in the protective coatings field. Um, one, uh, if you could do the viewers a favor, go through your resume, both your professional background and the training and certification you have uh, in the corrosion and protective coatings industry. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, first of all, I would like to start and let the audience know about my professional background. I'm an industrial engineer and I have an MBA a master degree. Regarding my uh, certifications, I am a certified a NACE coding inspector, and I have uh, endorsement in bridge and marine. Um, but I also have um, a certification from SSPC. One of those is the master coding inspector certification. Um, I'm also a PCS, protective coding specialist. Um, I went through also the training and certification for concrete coding inspection, that is a um, um, very good certification from, from SSPC. And I have uh, done as well the fireproofing inspector certification. Uh, added to that certification, I also have gone through different programs about surface preparation. So I'm also certified uh, uh, in the C7, that is the blasting uh, certification, uh, C12, that is spray coating certification, and C13, that is the um, a water jetting certification. So uh, I have an, a, some couple of more courses from, from SSPC and NACE as well, as uh, a um, quality control supervisor from SSPC, and marine coating from SSPC as well, and NACE a basic corrosion course. So that I think that will be uh, a good insight for, for, for the audience to know. Yeah, and uh, the thing with uh, achieving the Master Coatings Inspector, uh, you know, the professional designation of MCI with the SSPC, you have to be at a certain level when it comes to uh, career, and also, too, you have to achieve uh, certain levels of certification and inspection, which, uh, one, uh, you did obtain, and uh, you were, if I believe correctly, the first in Latin America from SSPC to receive an MCI. Is that correct? That's correct, Jim, and it, it was... It still is a, a great honor for me and, and um, always trying to 
to make out of the certification and transfer the most I, I can to my colleagues to, and to the industry. And I think the viewers would, will come to understand that the reason why you are the Master Coding Inspector and you were a uh, part of this Insights uh, series is that your background is not only related to the inspection part of codings, but you have experience both hands-on practical and certification when it comes to blasting, water jetting, uh, doing a coding application. Um, you also are an instructor for SSPC, uh, both in the Train the Painter program, but also uh, blasting program, uh, water jetting program, the inspection programs. Um, so, you know, one, you have a lot of uh, not only uh, background and experience, but you also have the certifications that are important uh, to, uh, to really uh, make you a, a, a strong candidate for this, uh, this particular series that we're doing. So Juan and I are going to have a discussion. And like I said, the focus on this uh, first couple series uh, episodes will be on uh, concrete. But again, a lot of the discussion we'll have will apply to pretty much any type of substrate when you're, you're looking at the inspe coding inspector's duties. Um, so one, let's go ahead and let's open up in the first topic that we wanted to cover, which is the role of the inspector when it comes to the contractor quality control. And then we're going to go into the quality assurance, but let's tackle first the role of the inspector related to the quality control. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, I think the role of the inspector when performing as a, a contractor a quality control is highly important. Um, and this is because um, the quality control uh, is always responsible for covering all, all the verifications that need to take place in field and verify if they are in compliance with the specification of the project. And it's a systematic uh, procedure that um, you have to do it every day, every time, you have to verify each step of the process. And uh, it's very important that you don't miss any of the, of the inspections that need to be done. Because um, sometimes when you are at a project in the field, it may seem that maybe if you jump out uh, one, one, uh, one verification, it may not mean nothing. But there is a great deal of importance of not missing any, any of the uh, inspection testing because that can, you know, uh, eventually represent a coating failure. And that will be a high cost, not only for the contractor, but also for the owner, that is the end customer. So I think that the role of the quality control inspector for a contractor is one of the most important uh, regarding, you know, uh, quality of codings. So in, uh, in your professional background as a, as a professional inspector, codings inspector, have you ever been hired by a contractor to perform uh, quality control work? Yes, Jim. Uh, we, we have been hired for, uh, for, for quality control jobs for, for some contractors. And this, um, I... I have seen that this mainly occurs when the specifications have uh, a requirement for highly skilled and uh, highly certified uh, quality control inspectors. So we have been doing that for, for some contractors. And I think we have helped them uh, a lot because in, in, in practice, um, I can recall some of these projects right now. And when you are a certified inspector, uh, the experience, as you say at the beginning, is very important. But when you are certified, you are highly aware of all the standards that, that you need to know to perform the test correctly. And, and, and I can recall, I can maybe say multiple examples, uh, but for time constraint, maybe I will uh, just mention one of them. That is when you do the PA2, uh, measurements or testing on, for example, in an oil, oil terminal or, or power terminal, um, you need to do it correctly. And, and, and 
and following all the the standard uh, tolerance and and guidance that the standard gives to you. And I have been involved in some situations that sometimes um, the quality assurance, for example, is not uh, taking the full knowledge of the standard and maybe it's rejecting an, an area, a particular area, and uh, doing it correctly, following the standard, in this case the PA2, uh, we have technica technically demonstrated uh, to the, to the um, quality assurance and the project managers that the area don't have to be rejected, for example. So that's, that's very important. When you are quality control, you need to be highly aware of all the standards and how this can help you, how can help the contractor and how can help the project. So you don't have any delays that, as you know, delays will carry on on cost. So the profitability of the project will, uh, will be uh, affected. Here you bring up a good point regarding the SSPCPA2 and doing the spot measurements uh, regarding to uh, film thickness. Uh, the interesting thing related to that standard is that it you know it routinely is changed and uh, updated uh, but it, it can be also to one of those most challenging uh, standards out there in the industry in fact to the point where sspc has a, a training class and an online class that also covers on how to effectively do the pa2 um, related to uh, inspection on the contractor side you know are you typically generating a, a, an inspection plan ahead of time so that you know exactly what type of inspections you're doing as, let's say, for example, uh, as a contractor's uh, operations finishing, let's say, the blasting? Yes, um, that's a very good question, Jim, because um, I, I can recall that, let's say, if, if we go back several years ago when I, I was not certified, uh, sometimes uh, in the project, you don't have an uh, inspection plan. But when you go through all these certifications, like from, for, for inspection, like from NACE or SSPC, you become trained on how to do these inspections plans and do it correctly. So when you do these inspection plans, you can be ahead of time. And, and also these inspection plans uh, help you to recognize where are these holding points going. So, and, and, and you are able to make everybody aware because sometimes we know that the production uh, side is not uh, conning a lot on the, on the quality side. So uh, when you do your inspection plan and you have everything ahead of time planned and coordinated, this, tr uh, this tends to minimize this little stress that uh, usually goes on on the real real life in project, no? The uh, pushing between production and quality. So, I think it's very important that every time a, a inspection plan is is uh, is performed, and this way you will help the project to do the inspection and taking these whole points uh, in an orderly manner. And that way you can keep moving forward and you also can be on the track of, of any, uh, any uh, part of the process that is going on. So you will be able to take some, not only the corrective actions, but also the preventive actions. So I, I will say that the inspection plan is a core of, of a train inspector to do it uh, every time in every project. Yeah, you, you bring up some uh, very important elements, you know, that the, the role of the inspector is you know, not to be a, a traffic cop and, a, and the block, you know, production. You know, obviously an owner wants to get a quality project done in a timely manner because, you know, let's say if they're shutting part of their operation down or, you know, maybe there's some restriction in traffic and things like that or, or you know, certain things, activities can't happen because of the painting project. 
uh, the contractor by having that inspection plan uh, and the um, and the quality control person on the contractor side, be it either you as an inspector or someone who works in their in their uh, operation, you know they can keep to that, make sure that they're meeting those requ- those uh, inspection requirements, and then the quality assurance for the owner side will be able to verify exactly what they're doing. Uh, time is money, um, so you want to make sure you continue to keep moving forward, but you got to focus on the quality and make sure that, you know, like as you said, the job's done properly. And then if there's corrective actions or maybe some preventative things, they're taken care of up front versus after the project is supposedly completed. And then that opens up a whole new uh, realm of problems and issues and challenges. So let's move forward towards the, the quality assurance side of this. So to kind of Recap things: the, the uh, contractor is responsible for the quality assur- the quality control, excuse me, and they are really the ones that are performing those tests that are a part of that inspection plan or what the owner wants to have done. The role of the quality assurance is to basically audit the quality control. Is that a fair assessment of that, Juan? Yes, that's correct. Um, I I will say, and I'm totally agree with you that. Uh, the primary role of the quality assurance is to audit um, the quality control process of the of the uh, contractor in this case, and and this and this role is very important for a total quality uh, process in place, and and I will say as well that the quality assurance um, also will be like an advisor for for the owner and also can recommend uh, the, the contractor quality control person or department on certain things that can help them to, to you know, be on the, on the safe side of the quality and, 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 and production because as we mentioned in previously, uh, quality is a way to get things done right and if you do, and if you get these things, uh, these things already done right the first time, that will be a totally quality project with a fine production and a high profitability of of the project. So, uh, so you know, again, back to to look at the the role of the quality assurance. You know, they're representing the owner. Uh, they are auditing what the quality control and the contractor is doing. They're verifying exactly uh, the tests were done and that the, the results are exactly what they need, need to be in order to move forward. If not, then that's where the corrective actions come into play. And then once that's done, there can be some re-verification to continue to move forward. Now, Juan, in your experience related to quality assurance, have you had occasion where you've actually um, unfortunately, maybe kind of assume the role of both a quality control and a quality assurance person? Well, in, in the practice, um, this is something that in, some, in certain projects, in certain regions, actually uh, it, it is happening. So uh, sometimes when, when we are hired as a quality assurance, we know uh, and, and this is a very good question, Jim, because um, this recall me that there is a fine line between what is quality assurance and what is quality control. And, and I, I know that certain industry and certain uh, companies have a clear understanding of this fine line, but you will find some projects out there where this fine line is not well recognized. So sometimes we... we we have had to pass a little bit that fine line and do a little bit of both of the quality assurance and the quality control. But I think in these cases, I will recommend that you always advise the owner and advise the contractor that you are doing this for you know, helping the project and trying to get things moving forward in the in, in, in the time limits, but that it is not um, direct responsibility from from the quality assurance. So, it's again, it's, it's a fine line, and and sometimes you you have to cross that fine line in order to 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 help 
the owner, a healthy contractor. But um, I, I will say again, I highly recommend that you uh, make everybody aware in the project that uh, who's res who is responsible for, for quality control, for quality assurance. And, and, and yes, it's something that uh, still these days we, we cannot avoid in, in certain uh, projects. Very good, uh, very good points there. So let's go ahead and uh, mentioning points. Let's talk about whole point inspection. So for the viewers to know when the quality control is going through, there are certain parts of the production which you want to stop and, and check and verify what was done. So, you know, typically there's a, a long list of them. They can be, you know, anything from checking the initial ambient conditions to post uh, surface prep to post-application and curing and everything like that. Not to go through every whole point one, what are some of the, let's say maybe, what are your top three critical whole points uh, as an inspector that you, you want to uh, talk about here in the episode? Yeah, I think that in general terms, Jim, uh, w one of the most important whole points, it will be the pre-surface preparation and surface preparation because uh, as you know, Surface preparation is uh, one of the most critical parts of the process, and you need to get um, a good surface preparation according to the specifications to get um, all the best you can out of the, of the products you are applying and uh, meeting the owner's uh, performance expectation of the, of the structures. Um, I think that will be one. The other will be um, all what has to be with a, with a paint application. Like um, I will mention, uh, I think, two main important points. That is the uh, mixing, mixing of the, of the product, because if you don't have a good mix, uh, the product will, will not uh, uh, perform in, in, in a good way. And uh, the curing time, and I, 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 will, I would like to mention the curing time because in, in my own experience, uh, sometimes it's one of the uh, holding points that is not very, uh, very aware of, of all the parties. For example, when, when you are uh, maybe coating an internal tank of a, a water tank, for example, there is an important process about the curing times. And sometimes these curing times are not uh, adequ adequately follow up. And sometimes if you don't do some of the testings that are out there for, for uh, verifying the compliance of the, of, the, um, of the curing times, you can end up flooding the tank and, and you know, you can have uh, failures in, in a short period of time if uh, you don't verify. You, you cannot always go only with the technical uh, data from, from the manufacturer or, or, or from the specification. You have to do the actual testing um, to, to verify that the curing has gone through all the stages. Very good. And, you know, industry best practice, you know, when it comes to the owner, um, it, it's not uncommon for the specification to list whole points that the uh, the owner or the owner's engineering team uh, deem to be very important. And, and obviously, if you're dealing with a potable water, you know, the, the curing for an internal lining, that's very critical because uh, you're, you're dealing with the potential uh, failure that could uh, really, um, let's say, the commodity in the, the tank would be ruined. So if you have a, you know, a full tank of water that's drinking, potable drinking water, could be ruined. And the other thing, too, is, that material that's loose in there could get into pump systems, processing equipment, and cause a lot more damage and destruction and things like that as well. So good points related to the whole points there, Mr. Juan Caballero. Um, so let's let's talk about the aspect of the inspector ethics. So all the all the major inspection organizations uh, that that train and certify inspectors, uh, they have uh, ethics requirements. Um, and the majority of the ones that I know of, I, I believe all of them do have documentation 
um, that you have to sign that you uh, will be ethical and follow best industry practices. And, you know, ethics can cover anything from, you know, the financial aspect of it. Um, it could cover to, uh, you know, errors and omissions that you make and also statements that you make as well. You know, when it comes to ethics uh, for the inspector, you know, um, what are some of your thoughts related to, uh, to that topic? Okay, I, I can tell Jim that about ethics is one of the primary, uh, um, how can I say, uh, one of the primary uh, um, personal is something, something that comes also from, from your personal background. And, and it's very important for the inspector because um, it doesn't matter how, uh, how much technical uh, knowledge you have, but if you don't have an ethical conduct, um, you will not, uh, you know, you will not uh, perform well. And, and I think it's a very important uh, topic to cover because out there in projects, there are a lot of, um, of situations that can be, um, that can be uh, or, or can lead to a breach of an ethical uh, conduct for an inspector. Maybe not, not all the time are like with some prejudice, but sometimes are maybe can be small things that not everybody will take it as a breach of an ethical uh, conduct. But in this case, I would recommend all, all inspectors and all, everybody uh, involved in the, in the coating industry um, to keep a high ethical conduct all the time. Uh, that will talk very good about your professional uh, background, will talk very good about you as a person, and, and most important, it will talk very good about um, you as an inspector. So you mentioned some of the, of the um, different uh, situations, like, uh, like for example, uh, I think you mentioned some financial issues that can, that can arose. Mm -hmm. And one uh, you mentioned when, when you, you make an error. I think that part of the ethics uh, of an inspector is to also recognize when, when you make a mistake, because none of us is perfect 100%. Maybe we always in the, in the look for perfection uh, and pursuit of perfection, but um, you, eventually you will make some error, and I think that you have to be uh, as ethical as possible to recognize when you, you make an error and you try to work it out, uh, in this case with the contractor, with the owner, and say, hey, uh, I made a mistake here, uh, but if, if there are certain ways we, we can correct this mistake. And always um, is to maintain an open uh, communication. Uh, if something is going wrong, say it, something, well, uh, uh, the news are uh, more, uh, you know the news uh, more soon when, when things go wrong than when it goes good. But um, I think that uh, as, as long as you keep an open channel of communication with the contractor, with the, with the owner, is the best approach that uh, inspectors can have uh, regarding the uh, ethics. And uh, part of the ethics will also deal with always uh, having a technical objective, um, um, you know, uh, role. So if you, if you always go by the, by the line of the, of the, um, of the, um, uh, ethical and, and um, um, I missed the word. <laughs> that's ethical. okay. Yeah, and technical. technical sorry. So that's the, the, the best approach an inspector can have. And the, the other thing too, I've heard this from other uh, inspectors in the field who told me too, the ethics also goes to the safety aspect, you know, looking for unsafe working conditions, um, maybe improper, uh, you know, use of equipment, 
or, you know, certain safety protocols that are not followed properly as well. You know, have you ever been in a situation as an inspector where you've seen an unsafe situation and you had to point out and say, hey, um, you can't operate this way. We need to fix this. Have you ever had that situation happen to you before? Yes, Jim. Actually, um, we have had that situation um, a couple of times. And what we always have done is that um, we, we talk to the, you know, if, if it's some employee from the contractor that is breaching, uh, breaching some uh, safety rules, um, we talk directly with his supervisor, but we as an inspectors, we have a duty as well to report any breach of a safety issue because um, I think that if, if you don't do this, maybe... Uh, if some accident happen, it will not only affect, you know, uh, the contractor, it will affect the owner, it will affect uh, the inspection company because we, we all are, are together in this. So safety uh, for us is something that you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, pass and, and any, any breach of the safety issues there, there needs to be a report because this way you can avoid an accident that may may also be a fatal accident. So I, I consider very important as part of the inspector. Maybe it's not your direct role, but you can uh, notice and as an as inspector you are trained to recognize some safety concerns in, in different projects, in different situations, that that you need to uh, to approach and, and and report. Perfect, perfect. You know, for the viewers of this episode, you know, I will put uh, Juan's uh, contact information and in the firm that he um, is, is the president of, and uh, uh, they do inspection services and consulting services, is uh, Naval and Industrial Solutions. Um, currently, you're based out of Panama and Colombia, correct, uh, Juan? Correct. Uh, we are based, uh, we have local office in Panama and Colombia, and what we we attend the regional market as well. Okay, so you're available for uh, some international work as well. Very good, very good. So I will have a site location, uh, I'm sorry, a website uh, um, address uh, for Naval and Industrial Solutions to take a look at. Juan, you know, as we're closing out this episode, is there anything uh, that you and I didn't uh, discuss here in our time that you'd want to cover? Well, I, I just want to... Uh, congratulate you for the great job you are doing. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm very happy to contribute with you uh, in this series of, of, of MCI Insights that we will be doing. There, there will be a lot more topics to cover, uh, and I look forward to it. I look forward to it because I, I really want to, to contribute to the industry with our experiences, with our knowledge that we can share, and I think uh, this way we can uh, be more of, of, of help for, for the industry and, and for, you know, other, other colleagues out there. Perfect. And I want, I, I greatly appreciate your time uh, today to um, have this discussion regarding the coatings inspector duties and, and talking about the role of, you know, quality control, quality assurance, going through some of the important whole point inspections and also let's, you know, talking about the inspector ethics aspect of, of the profession itself. Juan, have a great day. Have a great day, Jim. So, Joe, for you know, the lay person who's watching this episode who might only think that corrosion engineering is related to you know, metal corrosion, you know, as an overview, what else does corrosion engineering relate to? 